Today, we're sticking to our roots. Right, John? We're going to be using SolidWorks. We're checking out some of our favorite CAD functionality from 3D Experience SolidWorks. We'll start with the motor and the power cord here. And what we're basically going to do is just add a few components, right? Um, first, we can insert a blade that we already have. We already uh, ma made that. And from there, we can actually use a new tool that we'll talk about um, new to this release to insert a power button for our um, model because we know it needs to be there. But for this demo, we're not really going to be focusing on, you know, necessarily the electrical uh, wiring of, of, we're just going to focus on some of the mechanical aspects. And then what we'll do is we'll add some fasteners. And to finish things off, we are actually going to need to create a new part. So let's start out with a little bit of background. We have a rotary motor in this case, as you see highlighted on the screen in red. And what we're going to need to do is take this rotary motion and somehow convert it into a linear motion to move the blade from side to side. So to get a better picture of this, let's go ahead and go ahead and animate what we're looking at. So this is the rotary motor that we're working with. So we need to design a component, like you see on screen, that will take this and follow that rotary motor then moving the component side to side. And this component that we'll make will be attached to our blade, which is how our razor operates. So now that we got a better picture of what we're looking at here, let's go back to our plan for modeling. So this is the component that we're gonna need to create. Let's, uh, let's jump into 3D Experience SolidWorks. So I've actually already been working on this assembly and I've added it to a task that I'm already under so I don't have to search for it. I can open up right into this session and what I'll be starting with is as we talked about the motor shaft and the power cord. So take a look at my attachments though. These are the blades that I need for this design. So we can open up these the same way which will save us a click or two and in inserting them into the assembly. And here's the first little pro tip that I'm going to throw in there. When working with multiple SOLIDWORKS files at once, we can use the control plus the tab button to switch between open files. And this is similar to using the alt tab shortcut in Windows. Um, you know, also as long as I hold the control key, I can click tab to change my selection or, and really just click the one that I want. So we wanna insert these blades we just opened. We can use the access rotation buttons in the lower left-hand corner to adjust the orientation and that's all before I just drop the part into the assembly. So there are really a lot of different ways that I could position this if you think about it. But what I think makes most sense is basically just constraining them with a, a sketch because Gian's going to make that enclosure. So I'm going to use this sketch that I'm making to drive the position of the sketch. So I'm just going to add a couple dimensions. And after we add all of the dimensions, we'll be able to uh, add some mates to it, which is pretty simple. So I won't waste time showing you all the mates because not only are we going to do this a little bit down the road, but they also are relatively simple. So as you can see here, I'm going to click on an edge and then I'm going to click on a vertex and we just want them to touch. So it's pretty simple. And there is a lot left to do though. So uh, let's let's go ahead and add the power button for instance. Wait, John, are you telling me that you're gonna model a whole power switch right now and, and add it in there? No, uh, no, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I could, I could, I love modeling, but uh, and a much easier way to do that would be to use part supply, which um, in reality is just, it's a large catalog of switches and electrical mechanical devices that I have access to now which is new as of this latest release. So you can see, um, this is all part of the 3D Experience Marketplace. And as I said before, it gives you access to a huge catalog of all different types of components. Um, and basically I'm just exploring this to just give you a sense for, for what you can expect here. It's kind of like having a little McMaster inside of SolidWorks. I mean, right, Gian? Yeah, basically. That's yeah. pretty cool. So. What I'm going to do in this case actually is I'm going to search to find the push uh, power switch that will work for our design. 
I can even take a look at the specs and I'm just going to insert the part into my assembly and orient it in such a way that I can go ahead and add some mates. We kind of already covered this before. It's just a matter of selecting some faces and choosing the mate that pops up because 3D Experience SolidWorks is pretty smart and knows what we're looking for here. All right, so we're going to need to constrain this motor enclosure with some screws. So for all of you SolidWorks users, you're very familiar with Toolbox, but it's now in 3D Experience SolidWorks. For those of you who don't know, it's basically like having an entire machinist library right at the palm of your fingertips. You can see as I drag and drop a screw in there, it's automatically going to resize to fit the hole that I need, which saves time for modeling and mating standard components. And as I said before, it is the, uh, the latest functionality as of this latest release. So just because, you know, it automatically sized my screw for me, I can still adjust the length. And basically, I'm going to add these components elsewhere in the model as necessary. But I want to draw your attention now to this side-to-side -side motion of the blade. We need to figure out a way to constrain this because it can't just move side to side forever. But before I do this, I know we've covered a lot already. So, John, what do you think? Maybe it's a good time to check out the chat and see. Yeah, I think that, I think that's a great idea, John. Let's let's check out the chat, see if we got any questions. No, not not too many questions just yet. A lot of people look happy to be here. Oh, wow. Oh, there's our boss, John. We got to make sure we do a good job. He's watching. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian. <laughs> yeah, All right. Well, I think... if we don't have any questions, I guess we will just continue moving on. Yeah, let's go for it, John, whenever you're ready. All right. So just a quick recap. Again, we need to um, kind of constrain that side to side motion of that blade. So that's exactly what we'll be doing next. Uh, to do this, I need to create that new component. So I'm going to do this right in the context of our existing assembly. I'm going to call it shaft connector. And what we're going to do is be prompted to choose a face or plane to set as the origin for this new part. And what I'm going to choose is the face of the shaft. So basically what I'm doing is just using pre-existing geometry to reference this new sketch. And I'm just going to add a couple dimensions. And from there, uh, you know, we can continue modeling. Wow. Okay. So John, this is that slot that you were talking about in the beginning, right? Where, where we're going to take this vertical slot and that's going to allow us to translate rotary motion into the linear motion, right? Absolutely. Yeah. This is that slot that's going to allow us to take that, um, that motion and translate it into a, a linear motion. So it's kind of all the pieces are coming together, right, John? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. We're really cutting to the chase today, moving quick. So a lot, <laughs> lot more to show. Let's keep it going. All righty. So the next sketch will be the side profile. And what I'm actually gonna do is attach the sketch to the bottom blade. So that way, if I adjust the orientation of the blade later on down the road, my component will update with it. So this is just best overall design intent to avoid uh, making unnecessary changes later down the line. I'll finish the side prof profile with um, another rectangle to house my slot. And then I'm gonna actually draw some line segments to connect the two rectangles. So what I really love is when I go back to my original point, I can easily start to draw an arc just by placing my cursor again back at that last point that I sketched. So this saves a lot of time and clicks all in the name of rounding off some, some corners. So I'm going to add some dimensions next. And then it's time for my big pro tip, the S key. For all of you SOLIDWORKS users, you're very familiar with this one. But if you press the S key, it pulls up a shortcut menu. And it lets me jump into things like the trim command in this instance. And again, this just keeps my model focused on where I should be, right? Right in the graphics area. So I'm going to round off some corners relatively easily just by selecting a vertex. Wow, and of that course, SQ once I again. like those changes, I can just go ahead and click the green check. Now for the fun. All the fun is in bringing it from 2D to 3D. So I'm going to use an extrude feature. Now, I'm not going to choose a mid-plane extrude or anything fancy, because I'm simply going to model half of this component instead, because I'm going to add some detail to this half. So then I could just basically mirror the other half without having to duplicate any of my efforts. And this is just a great tip for design intent in general. So you don't waste time modeling the whole thing, you know? 
Just model half, mirror the other half. So next, let's use that slot sketch from the beginning to cut a slot hole through this component. You can see in the graphics area, we have a gray arrow. I'm going to flip the direction. When I turn the model around, I can actually drag this arrow as another option to choose um, the length of the feature that I have. So this not only provides more control, but again, just keeps my mouse right where I want it to be in that graphics area. All right, so I think, I think that looks good. We'll hit the green check mark and continue. I think I know the rest of the dimensions that I need to finish this model, but everything looks a little busy right now. So what I'm gonna do is actually just isolate some components. So my graphics area, you know, we just don't want it to be too crowded. We want to be able to focus specifically on this part. So after I hide it, we can move in the face, the front face that we want to actually work with here. And we're going to start a sketch on this face using a center slot. And here's another tip for design intent. I'm going to actually drive the dimension of this slot just by adding a collinear relationship. So that is selecting two edges there, a line and an edge, and just adding that collinear relationship. So that way, if, cha if it changes later down the road, our slot will update with it. I'll add my length dimension. And then what I want to do is actually sketch um, a couple circles. And yet, another little tip here. We can, After we draw our two circles, we can basically select the entities in the graphics area that we want. And we're given options, um, just like we would to add a mate. In this case, we actually want to add an equals relationship. So if I add the equals relationship, and then I go to add a dimension, You'll notice that if I change one circle, the other changes with it. So let's go ahead and extrude this. And I'm going to extrude that up to the vertex from our previous sketch there to terminate this feature. All right. So we're going to add one more circular extrusion just to hug that stabilizing rod a little bit more. And we're going to use that handy S key again. But you'll notice this time we don't get sketch options. We get options for features like fill it. So we're adding a fillet, and I think this is another good place to fast forward a little bit, just because um, you know it's a good spot to do that. Um, and finally, as promised, this is pretty rewarding. We get to actually mirror the other half of the component, and we get to see that with a nice yellow uh, propagation there. And boom. What do you think about that, John? I mean, we were able to create a, a component relatively quickly, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Yeah, that looks awesome, John. We went yeah. really far in just a couple minutes. Yeah. Well, you know, this component, um, it doesn't just stand alone, right? It's, it is a part of that greater assembly. So let's, let's keep moving. What we want to do is now exit this isolated view, and we're actually going to assign a material to it. So what I could do is uh, take advantage of some of my favorites in my favorite materials, but um, I'm going to choose to open up the material library and choose from there. So I'm going to put a nice ABS plastic on this and we'll move along. We're going to now add the mate. So notice I'm clicking a face. I'm going to hold my control key, click the other face, and we get a bunch of options, including the advanced mate for slot, which is exactly what we want. So 3D Experience SolidWorks is really just that smart to know exactly how you want this component to behave in the assembly. Nice, wow. So we'll add a couple more mates. Now I don't want this to be redundant, so we did speed things up again, but once I have it all mated up, we're actually gonna be able to see how the motion of this assembly works. Now I could do a motion study, but I just want to know quickly if this thing will work. So you can see I'm just clicking and dragging there. And we get a real-time display of how this assembly actually works mechanically. I mean, that's that's pretty amazing, right, Gian? That is pretty awesome, John. And that's, yeah, that looks like just what we're looking for. Absolutely, yeah. So that's also important to mention. Yeah, this is what we're looking for. But if it wasn't, we could quickly go in and make changes as necessary. But... I think we're just about done. The only thing left to do really is to save it. So in the 3D experience pane on the right, I'm going to grab the upper level assembly and I'll click save with options. And this way I can actually see what's changed, what hasn't. 
there's even an option for me to uh, release my reservation of the model so Gion can have at it next. So in the lower left-hand corner, I'm going to go ahead and release reservations. And then I'm just going to click Save. And basically, there's only really just one, left, one thing left to do is just to let him know that I'm all set with this. So again, I'm going to go back into my tasks. My assembly was already attached as the deliverable previously, so there's no sense in attaching it again. Just simply drag it from in work to completed, and boom, isn't that satisfying? Big weight off my shoulders here. Oh. And now it's all yours, Gian, <laughs> to see what you have in mind for that stylish enclosure.